Right, so in this video I'm going to be doing the flexor repair on this Blue Motion. It's a PD-80 and it's the DPF version with it being a Blue Motion. So I've got to take the DPF off the turbo first and then go underneath, uh, detach it from the bracket that it's mounted to, that's, that's mounted to the block. And then I'm going to have to drop the subframe because it won't come out without dropping the subframe. Even if you had the engine out, it still wouldn't come out because there's two brackets on the bottom of the exhaust that hit the subframe or hit the power steering rack. So you can't actually get it out this way or that way. So you've got to drop the subframe, then take the exhaust out, do your repair and put it all back together. So like I said, I'm going to start by taking the exhaust off the V-band that connects it to the turbo, uh, which means I'm going to have to remove boost hoses, intake manifolds, stuff like that. Um, not the intake manifold, sorry, the EGR valve and the ASV. So I'll start with all that and then start working on the actual exhaust. Um, I will be taking the intake manifold off this one because I need to clean it out because it's quite badly uh, coked up. So, you've seen me do that before, so most of this is probably going to be a time lapse, um, just so you can get the general idea of how to do it yourself. Um, and obviously, there's not going to be too much to explain really, it's fairly self-explanatory. Right, so now I've got this far, it's time to go underneath the car and get these two bolts that are on this flange for the bottom of the EGR. Uh, they're much easier to get from underneath with uh, a load of extensions, or just one or two long extensions. But they are M10 spline bolts, just two of them, one either side. Um, as, you see, as you saw, I had to take the rocker cover off just to be able to get that one bolt there at the bottom, which was... For some reason it's got two T30s and then an M8 spline at this side, all three going this way. And then the ASV has got three M10 splines going that way, uh, M8 splines, sorry, going.
going that way. So that's all that removed now. I've taken the intake pipe off the turbo just as like to save time in future I guess. Um because I'm gonna have to take the turbo off. I won't have to disconnect it like from the oil and everything. I just need to move it out of the way so I can get to the manifold bolts for the intake. Um one of them is like millimeters away from the turbo so you can't actually get a tool onto it to undo it. So you've literally got to take the turbo off to get one bolt out. Uh, the rest of them are accessible as it is. But either way, uh, I need to take it off because I need that manifold cleaning out. So that'll be getting sorted. The DPF, I haven't undone it yet because I want to get this I want to get this EGR valve out of my way so I can see what I'm doing properly before undoing the V-band. I've also got to undo it uh, underneath the car at the midsection and obviously the exhaust hangers. So we'll go under the car now and get this EGR off. If you look right up there you might be able to see the two M10s on that flange all the way up there. If you follow that pipe up, you'll be able to see it. So, like I said, you've got to have long extensions to get that, or struggle from the top. Hey, I've got those few bits done now. I've got that bracket up there removed. Just a load of 13 mils on that one. I've got that little shroud removed. I've got the EGR up there, unbolted. When it says focus, there we go. As you can see. And then I've also got the front half, because it was completely disconnected, the flexor and the front pipe is now gone. And I've binned the clamp. This is the front half here. And the flexor was actually disconnected at the bottom end and then it was held on by a strand at the top end. Now the plan is to drop the subframe Obviously disconnect the steering column inside and then drop the subframe um, undo these two here and then this 18mm on both sides and then if you look up there through the arm there's an 18mm up there and then I'm hoping when I drop this down the anti-roll bar holds the subframe up in place um, and obviously the the um, steering rack as well. Right, I'm in the driver's footwell now and if you can see just if you can see just there there's um, a little stud where this was screwed on so that holds that bit of plastic on and then over above the driver's footrest there was this 10mm plastic nut holding the footrest in. So once you've got that out, you just pull the footrest off, pull that bit of plastic off, and then that'll reveal the connection between the steering column and the steering rack. Right, I've got those plastics off now. So you can see that bolt head there. We need to turn the steering wheel until the bolt head's about there. So we can get a spanner on it. You could probably get um, a ratchet and a socket with an extension on it maybe. But I, I've always used uh, a ratchet spanner. Just seems easier. Uh, now I've got that bolt out, all I need to do is, I need to answer for this so I won't be able to film it, but you basically just wiggle the steering wheel ever so slightly like that, whilst pulling up on this knuckle here, and then this shaft up here will actually compress, so it'll allow you to lift it off the spline fitting that goes onto the rack. And there we go. The knuckle is off. I didn't even have to wiggle mine, it just came straight off. So you might be lucky, but sometimes you do have to wiggle it to get it off. It 
it's dropped about what five five inch at the back and obviously it's made that gap a lot bigger so hopefully i can get the dpf out of there all right now i'm gonna be going up top i've got to remove that heat shield that's a lot of t30s and then that v-band you can see you can see it just there that v-band needs to be unhooked i think it's a five mil allen moment of truth will it come out through that gap i think it probably will as soon as they undid that v-band up there it just dropped straight down so hopefully the wires and uh, pipes and stuff don't get too tangled and it'll come out fairly easy Okay, so it's out. It didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out, but it's out nonetheless. It's going to be a bit trickier putting it back in because obviously I'm going to have a pipe attached to it. So I might end up having to undo the drop links or something just to get that little bit extra drop on it. There's still quite a lot of slack on these power steering lines. Right, now that I've got the old flexi off, as you can see, it's well and truly broken. This is the new one, the replacement. Um, it's an 8 inch flexi, but obviously the old one is longer and it's still got the ends on the old bits of pipe and the DPF, so this adds about an inch either side. So the total length that the new one needs to be is about 11 inch, and obviously this is only 8 inch, so I'm going to add some pipe onto one side and then weld it on where it should be so i'll be welding that about there and then same on this side the welding it about there and then once that's in place i can put it all back together put some uh, assembly paste for the exhaust on that end and then on the other end in here i've got a new oem style sleeve clamp the proper ones that actually seal well. That'll be going on there like that. And then tighten it down, these are two 17s. And these actually seal a lot better. As long as you get the right size, they seal a lot better than the, the other style with the U-clamps. Right, so I've finished welding the new flexi in and the little bit of pipe, extender pipe. Uh, I've offered it up, put it back on the car and it fits perfect now. So I can actually start to clean the DPF. So I've got some of this Winds DPF cleaner, off-car DPF cleaner, as opposed to on-car. So it says to fill it up off a fully or near enough fully blocked DPF, you, you've got to leave it for like eight, to, eight hours, or up to eight hours rather. Uh, it says, you can leave it for between 90 and 120 minutes so hour and a half two hours or for heavily blocked filters should be left to soak for up to eight hours now it's quite late on in the day now so i'll probably fill it up tomorrow and leave it to soak right so it says to remove sensors and stuff like that but the only sensors i'm going to be bothered about is these two here these pipes so i'm going to put some hose clamps on these pipes to stop the fluid getting up to the actual sensor and i'm pretty sure the o2 sensor will be fine the others will be won't be in the solution hopefully um so i'm going to pour it in here until i can see the level is like up to about here so near enough at the top of the filter so it's almost full and then I'll leave it to sit and soak in and hopefully when I come to swill it out it'll uh, bring all the debris with it and all the soot and ash and whatever else 
and then that should be the DPF salvaged rather than having to buy a new one or even a second hand one still uh, about £300 second hand and of, uh, to get it from Germany unless I can find a breaker that's got one but I think most people in this country will probably just scrap them so I'm gonna pour this in I don't well, I don't know if it'll take the full thing or not but I guess we'll see right, I've filled it up now I don't know if you can see the reflection in there it's to about here somewhere so it's just over this top probe um, which is about there on the actual filter it filters at an angle so it's it's basically full and uh, I've used about half of the tub maybe just a little bit over half so I've got enough uh, another either another rinse on this one or another DPF so hopefully that does the trick um, I'm not sure if it's fully blocked or just partially it didn't come up with any warnings on the dash but when I looked in it looked quite clogged so it can't do it any harm anyway um, if it does end up knackering the sensors then so be it I've learnt the hard way and if not then we know not to listen to the instructions on this uh, bottle uh, I was going to take the intake manifold off and clean it out but I've just realised I've only got a new gasket for the intake manifold not the turbo as well um, and obviously I need to replace both because the turbo has got to come off before I can take the intake manifold off um, there's a bolt there's four bolts in it there's one at this end there's one here there's, then there's two one either side of this runner here and uh, it's the one that's right in the middle here that's against the turbo so like I say you have to take the turbo off to be able to take the intake manifold off unless it's already been off and somebody's left that middle bolt out then you'd be able to get away with without taking the turbo off right, I left the DPF to drain overnight and I've just stuck the heat gun in it to try and dry it out a bit this is the liquid that came out you can see it's completely black you can't even see it when there's you can't even see the bottom when there's hardly any liquid in there that's how black it is so it's definitely done something uh, I've just had it on for about 10 minutes and then my heat gun decided to melt so that's a bit of a bad design bad design feature from Draper having plastic that can't handle high temperatures for any amount of time but on the other hand I think it might have been thoroughly dried now so I'm gonna tip it up see if any more water drops through from from the top side um, if not then I'll be putting it back on the car once it's cooled off uh, I just tipped it over and uh, there's still a load more liquid in it to come out I mean you can see how dark it is on the grey floor so I think I might tip it up and see if any comes out the other end of the exhaust if it does then I'll have to keep going until it's fully dry so I've got a new V-band gasket from VW and I'll just put that on the actual DPF side because it's got these it's got three little prongs as you can see that hold it onto the actual DPF so that's held in place now by those three prongs so it's not going to fall off anywhere and I can put this in place so that's in place there and I'll just put the V-band back around it and tighten it up right so you can see there the bolt is right at the end of its thread so um, when I put it around the exhaust, I don't have to squeeze it really tight. I can just squeeze it as far as I can, put the bolt in, and then use the bolt to tighten it up. Right, so I'll go back underneath now and uh, sort out the bracket and fasten the exhaust up. Right, back underneath now. Uh, as you saw, I've already tightened down the DPF. I just need to tighten these bolts here.
All right, now I'm on to doing the new exhaust clamp in the centre. Uh, I'm just going to put some exhaust assembly paste on both ends of this these pipes here and then put the new clamp on. Right, back up top now. I'm probably just going to time lapse this bit because you've seen it. You've seen me take it all apart, and it's only reverse order to put it all back together. Um, obviously, intake parts, wires, and plugs, and pipes, and stuff like that all need to go back on. Airbox, boost pipes. Right, now we're all back together. I'm going to leave this pipe off just while I start it. I've got a metal plate because I've always got a habit of if I've done any major work like related to exhaust or intake or engine or like that, I like to start it with the boost pipe unplugged first so that if it does try and run away, I can just block it straight off and turn the engine off. Um, and that comes from an experience of where I did have uh, a 1.9 PD100 that tried running away. Uh, I got my friend to turn the engine on whilst I was stood here with a block of wood. And I put it over the intake there, completely blocking off there, and it was still idling at about 1500. So it turned the ignition off and then it killed it. So this is the sort of precautions I like to take now, just in case. Better to be safe than sorry, as I say. So I'm going to fire it up now, make sure it doesn't do anything that I don't want it to. Uh, I don't know if the solvent that's, that I cleaned the DPF with is flammable or not, so hopefully it's not. I don't see why it would be. you can hear is the clutch release bearing which is what I'm going to be doing next so that'll be probably the video after this maybe hey so I've just left it running for a bit I've noticed I've forgotten to put that shroud on so I'll do that off camera but the uh, solvent that I've put in the DPF made uh, a few bubbles so I'm gonna leave it to run great right, it's now the day after uh, yesterday I left this running for a good half an hour at least and it completely cleared out all of the DPF cleaner um, stopped making bubbles stopped smoking and now it's absolutely sound so if you wanted to know how to do your DPF on your PD80 then that's how and uh, thanks for watching